My gosh, guys, first mink of the year in a dry creek bed headed to a pond. Unfortunately, it's with a number two long spring, but it wasn't going anywhere. It was a nice back foot catch. I was kind of going for, you know, about anything on this dry creek bed, and uh, we got us a nice mink. So, pretty excited. Got the wife and boys with me, and and trap line dog, so we're going to check it out a little bit and get a couple pictures and we'll get it dispatched. First mink of the season. Alright guys, so here's that mink we caught. And then uh, just a few stops up. Uh, 220. Uh, going underneath the cedar. Another possum. Second possum we've got here. So we'll get this one out and keep rolling. All right, guys, quick update. So I uh, am running the trap line this morning. We haven't caught squat. Uh, I've been trying to leapfrog my trap line. I overextended myself, and I haven't. my back's been kind of messed up, so I haven't had the uh, ability to pull traps. Well, today I pulled a bunch of traps, so I have to run the line this morning and then go through the trap line again and refill it in. I feel like that's very important because I need to be catching fur and making money while I'm running this trap line. So I've got big gaps not filled in and an old trap line set that wasn't producing, but we're going to fix that problem today. So anyways, that's where the situation is. Let's get rolling. Alright guys, first catch of the day. Line set. I believe one maybe it's 165. But uh, just where a fence line tees, good spot, taking some coyotes and some coon and other stuff here. Wind advisory today, so anyways, first catch, been a slow morning, pulled a bunch of line, let's get rolling. Alright guys, I've got a fish stick set way down there. See where that white bucket is right there? There was a fish stick set there. Alright, so I had it cabled off to a heavy duty plate. You see how far I came. Never underestimate the power of a raccoon. This coon's not in any pain. He's back foot catch, but he is strong. Drug this trap and that plate that's in the water. I mean, we're 75, eh, probably 50, 60 yards down the river. So, nonetheless, got a raccoon at this location. Able to retrieve it. Uh, that Those plates work as a drag. They work well. And, uh, yeah, just stunned. I mean, that's quite a distance to drag that heavy duty plate, but he did it. Notice I looked, I seen this area was the first real brushy area on this side of the creek, or well, it's a river, small river. And uh, that's where I looked and that's where he was. I misspoke on that guys, that was a front leg catch. It was just a mammoth of a coon and I couldn't see you up in, you know, up in that brush. But uh, yeah, big, big raccoon front foot catch. And he dragged it clear down the way, which even makes him that much more stronger and impressive. But, uh, you know, he's dispatched. He was hiding out. We got him. All right, guys. Getting ready to set this pond for muskrat for a local farmer of mine. But look here, guys. We got two dates and a fence line right here. Right? Well, I know that any time on this, he's going to duck under this gate here. This was that second raccoon we caught today, guys. It's a big raccoon. There's another one, but this one's wet. It's huge. Uh, I just wanted to mention that because uh, some guys say you only catch small raccoon um, in the water, and that's just not the case. I've caught several big ones lately, especially since it's got cold. Uh, that's some advice Dale Billingsley gave me, a good friend of mine, and I took it, and it's paying off. I catch a coon about every day, and I'm only running, I think, five or six of them. So that's not bad. We'll take it. Look at this weather front, guys. You see this? This is the sun. Now look over here. Dark. Heck of a front coming in. 
Wow, that's windy. Here's the situation. This mud's deep as crap. This is an old cattle pond, and I was kind of warned about it, but you gotta be careful, you can drown pretty easy here. But uh, The muskrat runs are a lot more plentiful than I expected, so I don't know if I brought enough traps. Uh, but we'll set out a few more and then I'm out. I just didn't anticipate this level of, it didn't look like there was enough food source here to have a bunch of rats, but I, I anticipated wrong, so we'll set what we got and then we'll get more tomorrow out if, uh, if necessary, and I think it will be. Oh, look at that, wow. Dark over that way, it's coming in. And that wind is picking up. So I just planted those in real quick because I took a step. It was frozen mud. I took one step. I seen the run was up ahead here a ways. Busted my fat butt through. Three of the biggest muskrats I've seen. <laughs> Sw swam off so quick. I tried to stick a one tent out there, but they swam past it. So nonetheless, I got a really good feeling about this spot. Unfortunately, I can't tell how wide that run is. You see how big it looks? Um, so maybe I'll have to put those side by side. I don't know because there's more stuff going on over here uh, I don't know it's, these runs in these cattle ponds are hard to judge a little bit So but anyways three of the biggest rats I ever seen swam off full speed I tried to stick those one tens out and get them, but we missed but we didn't drown so that was fun Well guys, I became I came very ill-prepared for this Usually when I get a farmer says, hey, or a rancher says, hey, I got some muskrats in my pond, typically it's like five muskrats. Well, I brought 10 one tens thinking, oh, that'd be enough. I wasn't prepared for this pond. I'll show you a little what's going on here. This is just one spot, guys. One spot. Look at all those different runs. This more than one run system. I, I'm out of traps. There's more over there. There's more down here. We're gonna have to bring every 110 I got and call any traps and put some really long wire on it uh, to set them in because I've almost freaking went in two times already. So very ill prepared for this. We're gonna have to scout it real quick and come back with more traps tomorrow. But some big rats in here. I didn't see any uh, food huts or, or muskrat huts. And, and there's no vegetation even close to the shore. So I just assumed wasn't much in here well I assumed wrong assumptions make an ass out of all of us but nonetheless I'm really excited we'll catch a lot of rats here guys pretty pumped look at it it's crazy guys we just caught one here and we just caught one over there as I said it this is insane I'm gonna have to reset these two I just don't have enough traps for this deal, but uh, real excited. Well guys, just got back around the pond, already got a muskrat, not surprised. So anyways, we gotta get headed back to the truck, we're gonna bring an arsenal tomorrow. Guys, I've never had anything like that happen to me. The only thing that's stopping me from grabbing the rest of these one tens in the tote, going and setting it up, is I got an ADC job I gotta get to. So, you know, with 10 traps, we caught three muskrats before I left. And if I'd have took time and set one at every one, I bet we would have had another five, 10 muskrats before we left, besides the three we got. So I'll show them to you. All right, guys, well, here's three rats we got before we left, but we got to get on the road. Freaking awesome. All right, guys, so, uh, First day of shot or of deer gun one here in Iowa. And if you're out there hunting today, good luck. Uh, this is the first trap that we're catching on today. And down here in this ditch, guys, we got us a raccoon in a 220. Caught right behind uh, the head. Almost pulled the H stand. That's why I say those H stands work okay as stakes, but if you get something big enough, they'll get it pulled. So anyways, we'll get this one reset and go from there. First catch of the day. All right guys, this is coming out of a uh, brush pile. There was a thin narrow trail. We set a one and a half. We got a big coon by its back toes. So, uh, at least we got one. That's coon number two today. And the trail, I'll show you guys right back here. 
pretty narrow for a big fat boy to be traveling, but he made it work and we got him. All right guys, at the muskrat situation, it's changed completely. I mean, it got cold last night. When that cold front was coming in, it was warm and we dropped to like 12 degrees. I can only see one muskrat so far down the way, but we'll have to bust through at each spot and see what we can see. I can't even see the 110, so. Um, but we'll get this reset up today and we'll show you how many we catch. Hopefully we get more than one. All right guys, here's the situation. Miserable cold, having to bust the ice. A lot of the 110s have ice on top of them. Uh, so they were froze where they wouldn't snap off. So they're just going to reset here. You can see here's what I'm dealing with, thick ice. You got a rat here, moving, setting 110, one 110 at each spot for now. Um, just because it's hard moving. It's supposed to warm up again here soon, probably tomorrow, so let's hope so. All right, guys, so bear with me. Uh, we finished checking muskrat traps. We caught, uh, what was it, three or was it two? And a bobcat ate one. Then we went and set a badger job, which I didn't film, and now we're over on a beaver ADC job. Both the badger and the beaver are both ADC jobs, so... Uh, I'll go ahead and show you what I got going on here at this pond. Just got here, getting close to dark. All right, guys, so I was in a hurry. I seen all these bubbles back here. Uh, there's multiple beaver at this job, and they say that otters have moved in as well. They want them all taken care of in this big pond I'm working. Well, it pinches down here. We went ahead and put two 330s in here, right, with a dive stick over the top, so... That's the first sets we did at this place. I just got here a few minutes ago. We punched them in in about 10 minutes. So there's those sets going to uh, the culvert, which is caved in. All right, and then we're going around to the actual pond itself, and it is a gigantic pond. So we're going to have to come back here tomorrow and do more work, but uh, let's see if we can't find another set to get in. All right, guys, first catch of the day, uh, starting about noon today. It's deer season, shotgun, or deer gun, uh, one, day two. So nonetheless, we got a possum, the first, uh, actually, yeah, this is the first trap we checked today. So anyways, uh, set that beaver job last night, got into it with the landowner. We'll talk more about that later, um, but we got a possum. Let's get rolling. All right, guys, second uh, catch day, we're always in the trap line. That's what happens when you run a multi-purpose line and you're too spread out thin. Here I just dumped in a blind set and we caught a coon. What I should have done was screened up in there. There's a little trail where I pinched down. Should have put a 220 there and a high snare on the other side. So we're going to get this coon out and we'll go ahead and reset this, fix it up, put a 220 up there and put the high snare over on the other side. But uh, you know, you get in a hurry and you make mistakes like that, and then you just get one raccoon because of it. All right, guys, here's a couple fish stick sets. And uh, these footholds were on drags. Got a couple big coon here. I'd like to catch something else with them, but we got so many coon that that's what we're catching. And at the end of the day, I'm not too disappointed with that. I mean, that's two big coon in the truck at this spot. So, anyways... We'll get these taken care of. I know everyone's sleeping over there. But uh, we'll get these taken care of and keep moving on. Look at these big coon guys. I'll take them like this all day. In the water. It's icy. But those fish stick sets work. And I, I kept them towards running water like Dale said I should. And, and we caught with them. Two big coon. I'll take that out of three fish sticks at this spot. All right, guys. I believe uh, part of uh, being a good trapper is knowing when to abort a situation. I've got one tens in. I'm going to let them sit for two days before I even come back and check. I got to bust through ice. Uh, the one tens are freezing to the top of the ice, and I'm in mud right now that is up to my knees. So I've got soft, soupy mud and ice to deal with and not enough to stand on. So this is just a crappy situation and we're gonna walk away from it for a couple days, come back and reassess. And there you see 
put another set in, couple sets on, or a couple steps almost got me killed. Had a hell of a time getting out. And here's our only muskrat today. Let's get it out of the trap. All right, guys, at that beaver job, there's the uh, the main outfit where they're living. Here's a, a little bank den. Put a snare down here because it wasn't deep enough for a 330. 220 probably wouldn't have done the job. These beaver conibear educated. Then on that point there where that ice busts out, we got a 330 there. And then on the other side over there a little ways, we've got another 330 and another uh, bank down where they're coming up and eating. You can see there, that's the hole. And uh, with the drought, it's way down, so it's not, um, they're kind of drawing these bank dens out further than usual. But this is a great spot. We got five sets in, three like this, and then two at a pinch point. We'll see how it does in a couple days. All right, guys, here's today's catch. Not much, but hang with us. We'll catch some more stuff in the next few days, some beaver, more muskrat, maybe coyote or bobcat. Who knows? Appreciate you all. Tight chains.